is spring now, so hope you're having a wonderful spring Thursday. It's getting a little sunny here in the Pacific Northwest. We had some beautiful days over the weekend and into about Tuesday, and then it got cloudy again yesterday, but it's a little bit sunny today, so that's really nice and exciting. I've got some very pretty spring things on my tray here today. I've got some new cameos. If you watched Julie Bean's live video on Tuesday, you might have seen some of these new cameos. Well, I've got more, and I'm gonna show you different techniques for using them from very easy to a little bit more intricate. So we're going to be doing some gluing today. I've got some prong settings and I'll show you some little bead embroidery techniques to try too. Wanda woman, Becky, Wanda, hello. <laughs> Good to see you. Thank you so much for joining. So yeah, so Wanda he is here in the chat. Hey Wanda, if you want to talk with us and share your comments and questions, make sure that you head over to artbeats.com forward slash live if you're watching on Facebook or YouTube. YouTube. I can see your comments over here at artbeats.com forward slash live. I can see any hearts you send and best of all, you will be able to uh, shop while you watch. There's a little shopping bag in the corner of your screen. Just hit that. You'll see everything I'm talking about and you'll be able to to shop it while you watch. Nancy, hi Becky, love your beading and books. Oh, hi Nancy, good to see you. Yeah, I'm I'm feeling very bookish uh, this year. So I've got lots of books on my TBR. I've been reading some really good books. So thank you so much. Hazel says hi. Sharon, hi. Wanda Woman, pretty sweater. I thrifted this sweater. Well, I found it at an antique shop. So it's an antique sweater. I don't really know how old it really is. I would say 80s or 90s, but Oh, I love it so much too. Thank you. Kat, hi. Good to see you. Yeah, so thank you guys so much for leaving your comments, saying hi, and joining me today. We're going to have a lot of fun with these pretty cameos. And if you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, thank you so much too. Hello ever, over there. But if you want to talk and interact live, make sure to head over to artbeats.com forward slash live. It is so pretty today. Look at the beautiful sun. We've got flowers. Oh, it's a gorgeous day today and we are working with some gorgeous items. Tina, what cool item are we doing today? We have cameos on the tray. I'm gonna show you how to use some of our new cameos in a few different techniques. So it's gonna be a really fun time. Let's switch the camera over to my tray and let's dive in, let's do it. All right, there we go. Ooh, look at these cameos. I'm so excited. Let's see, let's move this a little more over here. There we go. All right, so we have got some really pretty new cameos here at artbeads.com. If you watched Julie Bean's video on Tuesday, you saw some of them already. I've got some different ones here today too, some uh, different styles. Like I love this little dragonfly, he's so cute. And I put this one in a prong setting bezel. I'm gonna show you how to do these techniques too. Thank you, Lori. And Wanda, yes, there's a cat cameo. The cat is really cute. I love the cat's little face. How sweet is he? Or she, we don't know. Um, super cute little kitty. Last week, if you watched our my live video last week, I had all of these beautiful Green Girl Studio pieces, and there was a cute little frog that we named Louie and gave him a whole backstory. So maybe we need to give this cat a name and give it a little backstory as well. And look at it, look at the little paws. You're just like, oh, so sweet. And then you've got the flowers in there too that are perfect for spring. So yes, so Submit your submit your guesses for the cat's name, your suggestions. <laughs> we got to name this cat. And then we've got this lovely butterfly one. And this one I put in a uh, Nun Design ring bezel. It fit perfectly. I just glued this one in. And then this one for spring is so pretty. We've got Oh, these gorgeous roses and flowers. I did some bead embroidery around this one. I'm going to show you the techniques for these. It looks like a Persian I had. Cashmere. Donna, you named your Persian cashmere. That's the perfect name for a Persian cat. I love that so much. Oh, beautiful. Wonderful. So I'm going to show you how to do some of these techniques from the very easy gluing. We'll go to more medium and <laughs> intermediate, I guess 
guess you could say, where we're bending the prongs over, and then we'll do a little more tricky, a little more advanced with the bead embroidery. So this is the Nun Design bezel ring, and look, it's adjustable on the back as well. Again, you can shop these if you are watching at artbeads.com forward slash live. Hit the shopping bag that it appears on your screen, and you'll see all of the products I'm talking about here today, and you can add them to your cart while you watch. That Cat Mio, squee! Cat Mio, that's such a good name for it. Yeah, Cat Mio. <laughs> I love that. So all you need to do for this one, and let's do, let's reverse it. So since I already glued the butterfly one into the ring, let's glue the dragonfly into this one. So I'm going to use E6000 for this, and this is super easy. Hi, Mary. Good to see you. I'm just going to put some glue in my bezel and add the Cameo, and then we just let it dry. Um, dries pretty fast, but you're going to want to let it cure for at least a day so it's safe to wear. And I'm just squeezing some glue in here, and then I'm going to just use the top to spread it around. Super easy. So we've got a good amount of glue in there. Put that back on, and then... Put it in and it fits perfectly like that is a really good fit on there so then all you have to do is let that dry that looks so pretty and you'll have a gorgeous cameo ring which hello do we have any bridgerton lovers i think this would be great for your bridgerton watch party and look at that oh it's so pretty so i think this is kind of like it's old-fashioned, but also modern because you don't see a lot of cameo rings. At least I don't. And they're so pretty. I think they're beautiful. So just let that dry and cure overnight. Like, oh, look at that. That's so pretty. So I'm loving these cameo rings. Again, the, the band on these rings are adjustable. You can squeeze them smaller or widen them if you need them a different size. So that's really easy. Another thing that's really easy, you can use these wonderful uh, prong setting bezels. So all you have to do is add your Cameo inside. And you could add like a thin layer of glue here, but you really don't need it once you fold these over. And I'm going to use uh, these little chain nose pliers to just give them a little bend down to hold them in place. See that? So they just fold over and keep your Cameo in place, and it's super easy. And be gentle. You don't want to be too rough and mar the surface. So yeah, just give it a gentle little squeeze. Just going all the way around. So this is really easy, too. It just takes a little bit longer than plopping some glue in a bezel and waiting for your Cameo to dry in place. Do, 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 do. just easy peasy going around doing the whole thing Bridgerton fan here yay <laughs> hi Cheryl good to see you yeah I'm excited for the new season of Bridgerton I love all of the costumes in that show oh, and the music's so good it's a good spring watch when spring rolls around, it feels like Bridgerton season for sure. There's beautiful jewelry on that show too. I've been inspired to make some jewelry based on some pieces I've seen on that show. So you can see it's pretty easy and it makes a nice uh, a nice little frame for your cameo too. It almost looks like an antique picture frame. There we go. And you probably noticed that this cameo was like a little bit smaller than the frame, but once we get these uh, these prongs folded down, it works pretty well actually. It's gonna stay well in place, I think. There we go. So that doesn't take very much time either. And just be careful around your pendant loop. There you go. And you can go back and give some a little more of a squeeze if you feel that's necessary. But this looks like 
it's perfectly in place. So if this, if you don't want to deal with glue, this is a good one too, because then you don't have to glue anything. The prongs keep everything in place. What bezel would the cat cameo fit? I believe this cat is 25 millimeters around. So if you look for a 25 millimeter bezel, one to match the size of this, that would work. This would be a good one for bead embroidery too. You can do any shape really that you have, you can do uh, bead embroidery around. So that's nice. Um, so yeah, so that didn't take very much time at all either. And you've got a nice cameo pendant. This would be cute in earrings if you had two. I'm going broke here, but loving this stuff. Yeah, try working here. Like it's temptation every day. <laughs> <laughs> Ruth, I didn't realize there's a new season. I think the new season is coming out in May. So we have a little bit of time. So maybe binge the previous seasons now so you can get caught up for the new season. I love the prong border. I would never have guessed they were fold over prongs. Brilliant. Yeah, sometimes it just takes seeing the, the techniques in action to really understand a component like this. And I think they look just pretty. So I've got the brass version around this dragonfly. I love the silver version too. They, I think they add like a nice little elegant antique touch. Yeah, these frames make it so much easier for cabochons instead of doing peyote around them. Yeah, a lot less time consuming. That's for sure, Lori. So pretty. So that's a really easy technique for that. Let's talk about bead embroidery. So that's another great little technique that you can do to make a nice little focal piece out of your cameo. So I've got one started here. I used the two seed back stitch for the frame here, and then I'm making a brick stitch edge, which we'll get into. But I thought I would show you how to start something like that on this one. So I am using a bead backing from the Beadsmith. This is just a nice piece of stiff felt. I glued this cap cameo on. Isn't that pretty? She's like the goddess Diana, goddess of the hunt. She's got a little deer following her. Um, I glued this cabochon on with E6000, and I'm going to stitch some seed beads around here. I am working with Toho round seed beads. They're both size 11 or 11 O. I've got a darker color and a more metallic color, and I think those, I thought those would work well with kind of like the antique vibe of some of these cameos. So we've got our bead backing. Again, you can find all of the things that I'm talking about in the shopping bag. If you're watching at artbeads.com forward slash live, you can shop everything I'm talking about here. Just hit that shopping bag and you'll see, you'll see it all. I've also got some wonderful tulip bead embroidery, embroidery needles. These are size 10 and they're sharps, which means they're a little bit shorter. And then I'm working with some Fireline thread. Uh, I like Fireline for bead embroidery. It just, I just, I don't know why. I just like it. <laughs> so what I'm going to do to get started is I'm going to make a knot at the end of my thread. I've got about two to three feet here that I've cut. I think that will be plenty and this might be the hardest part is making a double knot here. Just so when I put this into my bead backing, it doesn't go all the way through. The knot's going to keep it in place. So I'm going to I'm going to triple knot it. Why not? Why not? <laughs> there we go. I'm doing pretty good for doing this on camera. That one didn't quite make it to the other knots, but we'll just do it again. And it's going to be on the back, so don't worry too much about what the knot looks like. There we go. So that's good. I've done it a couple times there. And then I'm just going to bring my thread through the back of this close to the edge. So we're going to do a two seed back stitch to do this frame here with the seed beads. So I'm going to pull that through and the knot is stopping that thread from going all the way through, which is what we want. So I'm going to pick up two of these dark gold seed beads and bring them down and move those chinos pliers out of the way. And I want this to frame the cabochon. So I am going to pierce my needle down close to the end of that second seed bead and close to my cameo there. So you can see I'm going back down through the bead backing. 
ah, and it came off of my thread, which I do a lot. There we go. So let me get this thread back onto the needle. Another thing I like about Fireline, it's really easy to thread onto needles because the ends aren't really that frayed or anything. Um, so it's usually easier to get back onto your beading needle. And now that I've said that, it won't be easy because this is a live video. <laughs> Da, 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 da. There we go. I've never seen this done before, so glad to watch you. Oh, super exciting. We have a couple tutorials for this on the website too, artbeads.com. So if you type in the search box, search box your guide to bead embroidery, uh, there's links and videos to to step-by-step -step photo tutorials. There's videos for different bead embroidery uh, techniques, including the ones I'm going to be showing you here today. So I've stitched back into the bottom. I'm going to come back up through the top close to that first seed bead. So you see I've, I've pierced the, ba the backing close to that first seed bead we added and pull that back up. And then we're going to bring our thread back through those two seed beads like like that that's just going to give them a smoother shape make them look a little straighter around the edge of this cameo bead embroidery is what i do and sell leah that is amazing so you're probably more skilled at it than i am i've only done it a few times um so you should join our facebook group for serious art beaters and share pictures of what you've made leah we would love to see them you have used a lot of these cabs oh we definitely want to see what you've made leah so definitely join our facebook group for serious art beaters do it <laughs> do they make any color any other color of bead backing? Yes, they do. Um, they make black. And I think we have a couple other colors like brown. I think I saw a dark blue. You can also use felt. I used felt for this one and it was just a green felt that I had at my house. But the bead backing is a little bit stiffer, which is going to be nicer to work with. So what I've done here with my thread coming out of those two beads is I added two more seed beads to my little frame here. So I am going to bring my needle back down close to that second bead added and close to the cameo edge like we did before. Yay, Leah, so glad. Can't wait to see what you share. All right, so you can see like these look kind of wonky, kind of out of place just doing that. So this is where we're gonna smooth those out a little bit. So we're, we're working from the back. We're gonna bring our needle back up from the third seed bead back. So we're between those first two seed beads. And instead of going back through just those uh, last two seed beads added, we're actually going to go through that third seed bead back from the last two seed beads we added and then these two new seed beads we added. And that's just going to connect everything together nicely and make the shape a little smoother. See that? So that kind of smoothed that out. And this, these seed beads with this dark cameo is really pretty. So yeah, I would have probably, had I not been doing this on camera, I probably would have chose the black bead backing for this project, but I thought that might make it difficult with black thread and a dark cameo and these darker seed beads. I thought that might make it difficult to see what I was doing. So I did pick the white bead back for your benefit um, but if I were doing this just on my own I would probably have gone with a darker color to match my cameo a little more so you just continue doing that all the way around the cameo so I've added two more seed beads I'm going to go down through the bead backing close to the end of the bead I just added and close to the cameo edge pull that down and then count three seed beads back and poke back up through the bead backing near that third seed bead. And then go through those three seed beads to kind of straighten out the shape here. So that is the two seed bead back stitch and you just continue that 
all the way around. See how wonderfully that just shapes it up? And you can kind of see, I didn't do that um, here because I wanted to show what it looks like when you don't do that, when you don't join with that third seed bead. It's just not as smooth. And then I started doing it over here and it's a lot smoother. So definitely you want to make sure that you're catching that third seed bead back because it really does help straighten everything out. So let's just do that one more time so you can see that again. And then we will show you how to do the brick stitch edge to finish a piece like this uh, with nice, pretty beaded edges. So I've added the two seed beads. I'm going to go down through the bead backing close to that last seed bead added and close to the edge of the cameo. And then we're going to count three seed beads back and come back up through the bead backing close to that third seed bead. Yay! It's so nice to see, to have the project page to see everything. Good. Yeah, the project page is great. So we, we've been adding links to project pages for these live videos, and it makes it really easy to see how many quantities you need, like beading in Colorado says, and you can add everything to your cart with one click. So that's really nice too. So if you watch this video and decide you need everything here, head to the project page and click add all available to cart, and you're good to go. So we've counted three seed beads back, going through those three seed beads and pulling tight. And that, you will do that all the way around and you'll have a nice beaded edge for the edge of your cameo. Um, I'm amazed at how you can get your needle to come up exactly where you want. That would take me at least three stabs every time. Yeah, it does take practice. I mean, I definitely don't get it right every time. I will say this stiff bead backing is really helpful for that. Sometimes with the uh, more regular felt, it's a little more loosey-goosey, so it's harder to stab exactly where you want. And these tulip needles help as well. So really, the materials you work with can help make that easier. Um, um, I'm sure there would be a lot of finger sticks. Ah, yeah, you just gotta, you gotta be, gotta keep practicing and then you get better at it. Okay, so that is the two seed bead back stitch. So you can do that all the way around. You can do multiple rows of that with like different seed bead colors. So go all the way around and then maybe pick up that copper and do another row. Do a third row back in that dark color again. You can go really crazy with it depending on what you want it to look like and how big your bead backing is. Obviously, I cut this a little closer to size of the cameo. So then what do you do when you have all your rows of two seed bead back stitch and you want a nice finished look? So what you would do after that is you would cut your felt close to the edges of your uh, seed bead back stitch rows and you want to make sure that you don't cut any of the stitching that you're doing. So you would cut as close as you can without cutting those stitches because then your work would just become undone. And then what you're going to do is you're going to add a backing because you don't, when you're wearing this or, you know, displaying this, you don't want those stitches to show up. And again, if you're using a darker bead backing that matches the color of your thread in your cameo, those won't be as noticeable, but it is nice to add a little bead backing. So what I did here is um, I just cut this piece of decorative ribbon to the same size as my felt and glued it on again with the E6000. And then you're ready to start doing the backstitch technique. Uh, no, not backstitch, brick stitch. <laughs> backstitch, brick stitch. They're so similar. This is a brick stitch edge. And this is going to make your piece just look super nice. And it's also going to stitch the edge of your little decorative fabric to your bead back. So it's just a really nice way to get a finished look here. So to start this, it's similar as to where I am. So let's say you have your thread coming up. You're just going to add a bead. Oh, of course, Mary. Yeah, and if you guys have suggestions for what you'd like to see in future live videos, please share them. We want to help you guys. That's what we're here for, to help and inspire. So I've got that bead added. I'm going to come down and around through this decorative ribbon fabric that I've added and through the bead backing. 
as close to my bead that I've added as possible. You don't want that stitch to be too wide. So like just under the bead that I've added. And then you can see it's kind of in place. And this is what makes it brick stitchy. <laughs> Maria, I absolutely hate your classes. You inspire me so much and it makes it hard to know where to start. All kidding aside, you are an excellent teacher. Thank you, Maria. That was a little scary to read at first, but love it. Yeah, that's that's my humor of affection too, to be sarcastic. So I, I feel you, Maria. <laughs> like, oh, you're so great. I hate you. <laughs> It's just too inspiring sometimes. All right, so that's the brick stitch edge. So you just do that, and that's how you're going to start it. Your first one's going to look a little wonky. You can see mine looks a little wonky. That's okay. When you come back around and come back up through it, it'll even it out. So that's all you do. So we're coming up through that bead we just added. You simply add another and then you come down and around, pierce that decorative fabric, pierce the bead backing, get as close under the bead you're adding as possible, and you don't want to go through any of your other beads here. That's the tricky part. Am I right? There we go. And then pull tight. So you can see that one is in place, and then you're going to bring your needle and thread up through the bottom of that bead and that's really going to give it a nice look. So you just keep doing that and look at that. It makes such a pretty, oh, I love this. It makes such a pretty edge and it just gives that piece a nice finished look. Now you can even go, I love bead embroidery because you can just keep building on it. Just keep going. So let's say you go all the way around with your brick stitch edge and you love it and it looks good, but you just want more, more beads, always more. Um, you can add a pico edge to this. So what you would do, say, let's say we've got the whole edge here. Your thread is coming out of the top of this bead. You would just add like three or so beads. I'll just show you, I'll just do it. Why not? Just add like three beads and come back down through the next bead over like that. And then you've got a little pico edge that can add even more detail. Isn't that pretty? So that's something you can do once you've added your whole brick stitch edge. Just keep going. Add a little pico edge. Um, I'll go back to this spot and keep going with our brick stitch edge. Uh, so there's just so many ways to build on bead embroidery. So once you like learn those foundational techniques, like the two seed bead back stitch and the uh, brick stitch edge, you can just do so much with it. It's so fun. I, I need to do more bead embroidery because once I do it, I'm like, wow, I love this. Like it goes by pretty fast for bead weaving. It's really fun. I like having the bead backing. I like having that foundational element of the bead backing there. I think that helps. Um, it's just really a fun technique that I need to do more. So maybe with these new cameos, I can do more bead embroidery because I am loving these cameos and I think they lend themselves well to techniques like bead embroidery because they're just so detailed and pretty. Of course, they're going to look great surrounded by pretty seed beads. How do you hang these on a chain? Great question. So Another thing you can do, once you've got your whole brick stitch edge, you could make a seed bead loop. You could add like 10 or 12 seed beads and then loop back down through the bead you're coming out of. And do that if you want a really strong seed bead bale or loop. You could do that several times and have several rows of loop to slide through ribbon or chain. We do have tutorials for that as well. If you go to artbeats.com, type in your guide to bead embroidery, we've got uh, tutorials for that. We've got step-by-step -step photo tutorials for the two seed bead back stitch, which I showed here, the brick stitch edge, Pico edge as well. It's a really great guide for getting in to bead embroidery. So that's a great question, Ruth. You can also um, glue a bale to the back of this if you don't want to, <laughs> if you say, I'm done seed beading. I, I already did the bead embroidery around the edges. I don't want to do it anymore. Glue a bale on the back. That's really easy as well. And just make sure the loop is popping up 
and you've got a pretty piece that you can display as a necklace that way. So different ways to display these in your projects. Great question, Ruth. Thank you for asking. So that is that is the two seed bead backstitch. That is the brick stitch edge. It's very simple once you get the hang of it. So those are some techniques for adding cameos to your projects. We had very easy and then we had even easier. <laughs> really, these are all very easy once you think about it. It's just time-wise, some are a little bit longer than others. So quick, a little slower, even more slower, but not that slow when you think about everything that you're actually doing here. So really fun. I need to finish this up because I'm loving these colors together. I think it's going to make those flowers pop and I'm going to continue with that Pico edge too because I love adding even more. Eric's not here today, Wanda. You noticed. So I am all on my own. So make sure to hit that shopping bag. He hasn't been able to feature the products as I'm talking about them. Just hit that pro that shopping bag and you'll see everything I'm talking about here and shop to your heart's content so make sure to leave some comments for eric so uh, he can see them afterwards say hi to eric on the replay <laughs> <laughs> yes, so if you're just coming in, uh, you can always watch the replay. It is available to you whenever you need it. Then you can pause, fast forward, or let's say you're going to order some of these supplies today. Bookmark the page this is on and then come back to it when you've got all your supplies so you can beat along with me. Um, I think that's a great idea. And just bookmark, I would bookmark the artbeads.com forward slash live page just in general because that's where you're going to see all of our new uh, live videos and be able to watch the old ones as well. And what's really great about the ones coming up is there's a nice little share button. So you can add a reminder to your calendars and... Um, you can, uh, <laughs> my husband hates your classes too. Different reason. Probably because I'm making you, I'm inspiring you too much. You're spending maybe some money on these things. Oh, well. <laughs> Sue, hello. Yay, miss you, Eric. Becky's doing a great job. Thank you, Wanda. So yeah, everyone say hi to Eric on the replay and make sure to bookmark that artbeats.com forward slash live page uh, so you can stay in the loop with all of our upcoming live videos. Sarah Lovecraft is going to be going live tomorrow at 1 p.m. Pacific time, 4 p.m. Eastern. So make sure you watch that. Wanda, I know you are a Sarah fan, so I'm sure we will see you there in that chat. So yeah, so that is our project today. We did some fun cameo things. It was a lot of fun. All right, let me um, bring you back to my face so we can say a proper goodbye. I've got like crazy space bun bangs today and I will show you uh, my projects. Let's show off the rings. We'll model the rings. Oh, they look good with my sweater, my antique sweater. Who would have thought? Antique sweater with cameos. Beautiful. Oh, these are fun. I like these a lot. And then let's see, what else did we make? Oh, we made some pendants. So we need to add that. I think these would be great earrings too. And a lot of these uh, cameos do come in packs of two. So, oh yeah, these would be such cute earrings. Look at that. Yes, I'm gonna add these to ear wires. So a lot of these cameos come in packs of two. So they're perfect for earrings already. Um, and then we are working on our little pendant here, which is gonna be... Oh, everything looks good with my sweater today. Um, this is going to be gorgeous once we get it all beaded up. So very pretty. I'm very excited about those. We've got, we're cameoed out. We're just, we're feeling the spring cameo beauty today. Thank you, Sharon. Oh, I'm so glad, Cheryl, that you find me inspiring. Hi, thank you, Hazel, for watching. Beading supplies are cheap therapy and you get pretty jewelry. That is very true. You get so much more out of it than what you put into it. I agree, Wanda. So wonderful time today. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Join that Facebook group for Serious Art Beaters. Leah's going to share some of her uh, bead embroidery projects there. I can't wait to see them. We want to see everything that you guys work on, so make sure to join that group and share what you've got going. Going. and I will see you guys next time oh I'm going on a reading retreat this weekend uh, my friends and I got a little Airbnb and we're gonna go out by the ocean and read so I'm very excited for the weekend maybe I'll bring some beading projects too so let me know what you guys are gonna be doing this weekend over in the Facebook group I will see you next time bye